worship you.
try that one more time. I said, open up your mouth and give God a shout. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a shout. Come on, open up your mouth and give God a shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. While you're standing, I'd like to give honor to my pastor who's watching, Dr. Shamari and Jack, co-pastor Jackie White in Charlotte, North Carolina. Somebody put your hands together for my pastors who permitted me to come. Who permitted me to come. And to all of the people of God that's represented in this place and to this great man of God and his wife, Pastor Witness, come on, put your hands together for him. To Dr. Val, who is accompanying us, put your hands together for her. To Dr. Tanya Hall and Unika Chambers, who made it possible for us to be here tonight. Somebody give God a praise for them. Yeah, you don't know the help, but it's the help that helped us to get here. So why don't we do that one more time and give God a shout for them. And I'm so honored to have my own blood sister with us. Wave your hand, Dr. Kathy Bynum. So glad to have you here with us. To all of the pastors and the preachers that are represented in this building, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. My God. My God. I don't know about you, but I, I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep last night. I couldn't sleep because I could feel the stirring in the land. I can feel what God is doing across the continent of Africa. Sometimes we think that when the Lord calls us to preach that we're preaching to a building. But we must understand that every time the Lord gives us an opportunity to open up our mouths in the presence of people that do not belong to us. I hope somebody just caught that. People that do not belong to us but belong to the Lord. It becomes humbling to know that the Lord would consider you and trust you with his people. Somebody touch somebody next to you and say, we are his people. Come on, say it again. We are his people. I have been looking at this. I got up. I went to sleep at about 6.30 this morning. Woke back up at about 10. And I woke up with such a heavy weight of responsibility sitting on my shoulders. I heard in the spirit the Lord talking about reestablishing our faith in him. And I heard the question, who moved my faith? Who moved my faith? I'm going to have to walk in teaching here tonight because by the time God get finished with this word, I am making you a solemn promise that none of us will ever be the same again. You won't pray the same. You won't speak the same. You won't operate the same. Everything about you is about to change. There's a word that people use often, and that word is rhema. So then you have to ask yourself, what is a rhema word? A rhema word is not just revelation, people. A rhema word isn't a rhema word unless you understand that that word is for you. 
just because it is spoken doesn't mean it's for everybody. Because the person sitting next to you will have no response to it, not internally or externally. But you have to know tonight when God is talking to you. Because the Lord is going to require a response. 1 Corinthians 2 and 6. And the Amplified Bible and it says. Yet when we are among the full grown spiritually mature Christians. Who are ripe in understanding. We do impart a higher wisdom. The knowledge of the divine plan previously hidden. But it is indeed not a wisdom of this present age or of this world, nor of the leaders and rulers of this age who are being brought to nothing and are doomed to pass away. When you look at what is happening in the world, God commissioned me to take the trip to hell and back so that I can bring back an answer because the problem that we are having around the world now is a mind problem. I didn't get no amens right there so I'm gonna talk to the screen. It's the mind that the enemy is attacking the mind. You got people killing their own children. How can a mother drown six children how can a mother put two sons in a car and drive it off an embankment into a river? How can people walk into a house and kill eight members of their own family? I'm not hearing y'all talk to me because you think that's about them, but I want you to know that the possibility for crazy is sitting right next to you. The possibility for people to be overtaken in their minds. The possibility for people to walk out of the church and commit suicide. You got pastors putting guns in their mouth and blowing their brains out. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You got pastors wives that are killing themselves. Something is wrong because we cannot continue to just shout and dance and not have a remedy for your mind. We don't need crazy praising God. We don't need people to come into the house of the Lord and praise God because they're trying to cause something called serotonin and tryptophan to come off in the body and give you a feel good. And so you leave the house of God thinking that you got a breakthrough when you don't. You just had a chemical reaction. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. So, I am commissioned by God to teach this. And I must. And I must. There are three ways that your brain receives information. And I want you to walk with me because it is going to change your life like it did mine. You're looking at me today and wondering how in the world did I make it through 15 years of the foolishness that I walked through? Well, this is how. This is what the Lord taught me. And this is why I cannot be moved and I will not be shaken. The three ways that the brain receives information. Number one is general acceptance. And what is general acceptance? General acceptance is what I always think. It's the way I think every day. It's the way I think about my family. It's the way I think about my friends. It's the perception that I have of myself. And so some of us are are locked in our own perception of ourselves and God is trying to get you out see let me help you with something when I was 
going through and walking through this transition because that's what God showed me it was a transition when I was walking through I was long finished with all of the 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 drama that came along with it in my mind but can I tell you what my problem was I was done with feeling sorry for myself I was done with all of what I was dealing with I just didn't know how to get another life I, I didn't know how to break out of where I was because general acceptance had already convinced me that my life was over. So I didn't know how to get out and beyond that point. There's a lot of people in here that's, that's tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, but they just don't know how to go get that other life because I'm here to prophesy to you that there is another life that is waiting for you and it's bigger and better than the one that you have right now. And the only way that you're going to receive it, you got to prophetically respond to what I just said. Who is God talking to? General acceptance. This is who I am. This is what is happening to me. This is what I'm going through. And this looks like this is where I would be because ain't nobody in my family never went any further than this. My God from Jesus. The second way that the brain receives information, it's called, it's called converted currency. God taught me this, people. Converted currency. When he said study the brain, I went on, I went on Google. And for years, since 2009, I started studying. Then the Lord sent me to school and found a mentor for me and sent me back to school. And I got a degree. And now I am a right brain practitioner. I treat people that have PTSD. I treat people that go through drama. So I'm not up here trying to give you a little lesson. I know what I'm talking about. And it's not just theory. It's experience. Converted currency. Converted currency is what I hear turns into something I can use. And so a lot of people hear things, but they don't allow their brain to have that, that, that experience of converted currency. But this is the one that I absolutely appreciate. Number three, it's called the circulated time frame of the brain, which means when you hear something that has the ability to change your life, you only have a certain amount of seconds to receive it. I'm, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. Or it will escape your life as if you never heard it. I'm, who am I talking to right there? It's called circulated, a circulated frame. When God says uh, he is going to bless you, you got a certain amount of seconds to receive that. Who am I talking to? Because you cannot sit in the body of Christ and claim that we operate in the prophetic, but when somebody speak a word, you sit there acting as if they're talking to somebody else. I'm here to tell the believer that the way we going to come out is God is going to speak us out because man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God oh Jesus oh Jesus you're going to live because it's going to come out of the mouth of God walk over here and say that because Maybe somebody didn't hear what I said. You're going to live because it's going to come out of the mouth of God. Because you belong to him. He's going to find a way to speak to you. Good Lord have mercy. He's not going to leave you where you are. It took a word to save you. And it's going to take a word to deliver you. Touch your neighbor and say he can't leave us like this. So, so Genesis, how did we get here? Why 
are we in the place that we're in now? Why? I hate to say it again. Why is Africa acting like they're Americans? Why? Why is Africa about to lose your sound and your DNA? Because you think it's better in America when it's worse. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I ain't getting nobody to talk to me. I ain't getting nobody to talk to me. Listen, all of us is experiencing the level of God that we are experiencing because of y'all. Back in the day, about 25 years ago, when I was praying at 5 a.m. in the morning, I kept praying, God, give me the God of Africa. How is it that I'm praying for the God of Africa and I come to Africa this time and you act like Americans? I don't want that God. I'm not hearing y'all. It's not working for anybody. I want the African God. I want the God that answers prayer. I, you don't hear me. God, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Where is the Africans at? I want to know where is the blood bought Africans at because it is that power that is in your prayer life that shifts the whole entire world. I'm here to tell you right now, I'm here to tell you right now, when I do this for women tomorrow, don't come in here with no heels on, don't come in here with no ball gowns, don't come in here all dressed up, you better put on a t-shirt because we're going in the presence of God because when you realize who you are in God and the power that you possess, God is going to turn your life upside down. The cute church is over. The pretty church is over. We are in trouble and we need power. Somebody give him a praise. Somebody give him an African praise. Somebody give him an African praise because America is watching. Come on, somebody give him an African praise because America is watching. Sit down, Genesis 2 and 7. I'm going to tell you how we got here. Give it to me. This is how we got mixed up. This is how the Christian, let me, let me say this before I go any further. Hold up, Hassan. Because of where Africa sits, if you die in prayer, the world is in trouble. I don't think you understand that. I don't think you understand that. I don't think you understand that. Everything started right here in Africa. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Who is God talking to? Everything started. The oldest fossils that I found is founded upon the continent of Africa. Everything started right here. I'm not hearing y'all. The spirit that you carry, it affects the entire world. And if y'all dry up, we are going to die. You don't understand why I came here. I came here so that we can get some oxygen. Because I'm not hearing y'all. Because we're dying. Because because y'all refuse to be African. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul a living soul man became here it is man became a decision maker 
man became a decision maker. Psalms 139 says, for you did form me, my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. I will confess and praise you because you are fearful and wonderful. And for the awful wonder of my birth, wonderful are your works. And that my inner self knows right well. Here it is. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape when as yet there was none of them. What is he saying here? He's saying here that I knew you as a soul before I knew you as a body. When you came into the earth, I picked a soul to sit it in a body and then I gave you your shape. So my relationship with you is based upon your soul and not your body. And you're asking God, when am you, God, when are you going to bless me? He said, I'm going to bless you like this, that you will be blessed even as your soul is. In other words, your soul got to be even in order for me to bless you. But wait, so we are a three-part, tripart man. What is that? What does that mean? Let's talk about it. I know you're familiar with it, but you got to let me do this. The body. The body is the world con conscious. The body is exposed every day to the world. What does that mean? That means that my five senses, my taste, my touch, my smell, my sight and my hearing is the sensuality of my body. Then what is my soul? My soul is the immaterial aspect or essence of my human being. Watch this. My soul is my, not my world conscious, but my soul is my self conscious. This confers my identity. My soul gives me my identity. My soul is a mixture of my mind and my heart and my will and my imagination and my thoughts and my desires and my passions and my dreams and my perceptions. What am I saying? I'm saying God created you, but you made you. You are the result tonight of everything you have taken into your soul. Everything that you are today is what you decided. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. So when we make statements like this, that the devil is busy, when we make statements like this, that I'm under an attack from the enemy, then I have to beg the difference. You're not under an attack, you're under acceptance. Because the outside body, the senses, are exposed to Satan. And watch this, the body is the presenter. Satan is a presenter. And you are a receiver. And so how he gets in, he has to enter your life through one of your senses. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm going to come over here because I didn't hear nobody say nothing over there. If the devil is going to get in your life, he's coming in through your taste. He's coming in through your smell. Oh, I smell his cologne. And I remember what that felt like. Uh -huh. He coming in through your hearing. He coming, y'all ain't saying nothing. He coming in through your sight. That's why the Bible said, set no evil thing before your eyes. Who is God talking to in here? Can I help us? 
Can I help us? So there is no such thing as, it's an oops. And, and then Dr. Bynum, I slipped. No, you didn't slip, you decided. I, I, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Y'all not gonna let me say amen in here. No, 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 no. The devil didn't jump on you because that is illegal. Let me help you with something. There was laws in the spirit. And I had to learn this. When I was telling God the devil is attacking me. He said, hold on a minute. Let me help you with something. There was laws in the spirit. A spirit cannot override your soul and mess with your body without your soul's permission. Wait, let me, I gotta, I gotta come down here because I gotta, I gotta show you something. Y'all sit down because I want everybody to see. I want everybody to see. I want to use y'all. Come here, Tanya. I want you to stand out there. You're going to preferably be, be Satan, the presenter. My God. My God. Come here, baby. You're going to be the body. Come here, Rhonda. You're going to be the soul. Come here, Kathy. Where are you? You're going to be... The spirit of God. Mama Cedar, come here. You're getting ready to be the spirit of the devil. <laughs> so when the body is full of taste, touch, smell, hearing, sight, if Satan is going to get in, then he has to come with a gift that would appease one of your senses. You... He presents it, the body accepts it. The body turns around and tells the soul, this is what we're going to do. The soul receives it. Now, now, a thought is just a thought until you think on it. Because once you give it think, that's why the Bible said, whatsoever a man thinketh, whatsoever a person continues to think, that becomes your mind. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who is God talking to? Uh-huh. Yeah, we get thoughts every day. But every thought is not yours until you think on it. I'm not hearing y'all. That's why Joshua 1 and 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, but I shall meditate on it day and night. Why am I going to meditate on it? Because it has to become my mind. Not just my mind, it must become my mindset. My mind must be set in that situation. Now here, come right here, Kathy. Come right here, Mama Cita. Turn around this way. Turn around face and get over there. You stand right here. So now, if Rhonda receives what Satan has presented by way of the body, then, because let me help you with something. Somebody said, well, I got the spirit of God in me. No, 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 no. When God breathed the breath of life, he breathed the breath of life. That's not the Holy Spirit. Because when Adam and Eve failed God, he had to take holy out and leave them with the breath of a consciousness. That's why the Bible, okay. Give me, give me, where's my laptop? Give me my laptop. I gotta, I gotta show you. I gotta show you. I gotta show you. I got to show you because it says here in Romans 8 and 16 that the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit, which means there is a separate spirit. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
Y'all ain't saying nothing. He said, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, if Rhonda keeps what the devil had presented by way of her hearing or by way of her sight, now the soul has decided that they want that sin. Now the spirit of the devil is legal to not only overtake your mind, but go beyond your mind. Mama, see to stand up. Go beyond your mind to the body, to the body, and make the body produce the sin. I'm not hearing y'all. So the spirit of the enemy is producing the sin because the soul decided on the sin. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. God, I wish, I wish I had a church in here tonight. I wish I had a church in here tonight. So y'all need to repent to the devil. I'm not hearing nobody. Y'all need to repent to the devil. Well, he attacking me. No, no, no. You decided on him. And now he is doing what he is legally equipped to do. He is legal in attacking you. He's legal in making you fornicate. He's legal to make you lie. He's legal to make you cheat. Because that's what your soul decided. Mama Cena, come over here. So here we are. We over here. And we want God to change this. And that's not how it works. We want God to change our body from doing what it does. That's not how it works. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So in other words, here it is. We want a different life while we putting another life in our mind. Y'all gonna make me walk this room. I wanna see who I'm talking to. You want a holy life while you putting sinful stuff in your mind. It doesn't work like that. Whatever you put in your soul is gonna end up in your life. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. It's called intake. You gotta watch your intake. I'm not hearing y'all. I need a church in here. You gotta watch your intake. You can't take in one thing and expect another. If you wanna live holy, then take the word in. If you wanna be righteous, then take the word. Who am I talking to? Who is God preaching to? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh huh. The body picks it up from the outside. So, how did it happen? How did it happen? How did God show that to me? Where did I get that from? Where did I get that from? I'm finna show you. Genesis 2 and 15 said, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and guard and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and blessing and calamity, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. That's what the scripture is birthed, that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Uh, uh, hello, 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 hello. Am I, am I at home or am I a visitor? I said, am I at home or am I a visitor? Okay, okay, I just want, just want to see where we at. Now, three and one. Now the serpent was more subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he, Satan, said to the woman, can it really be that God has said you shall not eat from every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees of the garden, uh, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. 
The serpent said, you shall not die. Uh -huh. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. And you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil and blessing and calamity. What is calamity? Uh huh. You're so dumb. He already telling you right there that if you eat of the tree, you're going to eat calamity. What is calamity? A great misfortune or a disaster, a flood and serious injury. You wasn't listening, Eve. God said, if you touch it, you're going to eat calamity. You're going to eat trouble. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Here it is. Are you ready? This ain't my woman's message, though. And when the woman, S-A-W, senses, raise your hand, senses, high, raise it high. When the woman saw sight that the tree was good, suitable, and pleasant for food, taste, that it was delightful to look at sight, uh, and a tree to be desired, passion, flesh, in order to make one wise, she touched uh, of his fruit and tasted and ate, and she gave some also to her husband, and he ate. That's how Satan got in. He got in through their senses. Wait a minute. Can I prove to you that this is a real law? Can I prove it to you? God show me. Can I, can I show you it's a real law? Listen, when the Bible said, and Jesus was led out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The Bible said Satan didn't come until Jesus got hungry because he deals with appetite. I I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He didn't come until Jesus was hungry. Uh, when your spirit is open and you hungry for something, then the devil comes to feed you an appetite. I'm not hearing y'all. And that's why we can't be dry in the church. That's why we can't turn into some Christian sinner. That's why the presence of the Lord got to be in the house. That's the reason why we will sacrifice nothing for the glory to show up because when the glory shows up you are filled and when you get full you don't have any more room for the enemy okay okay sit down S sit down I gotta tell you this I, I gotta I said God it's my mind I said, I can't, I can't get past all the stuff that's going on in my mind. I said, but my mind. I said, what, what, what is happening? He said to me, because your mind, your brain is like real estate. He said, it's like you owning an apartment building. And so you got 10 apartments when you have rented all of them out. Your building is full. He said, your problem is you keep allowing the capacity of your brain to be overfilled with TV, social media, what people got to say, all of that. He said, so when it's time for me to speak to your mind, you don't have any more space. You're out of capacity. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. That's why he said, you got to guard your heart. You got to guard it because out of your heart, it flows the issues of life. You got to have room for God. You got to have space for the word to work. Who am I talking to? You too full. I'm not hearing hearing y'all oh god you don't have the capacity to house the glory because you're full of television you're full of social media you're full of gossip you're full of mess i ain't hear nobody talk to me I ain't hear nobody talk to me. I can make you pull your phone out and make you go to your social media and it'll tell you how many hours you sit looking at somebody else's life. You think you're just looking, but you're filling your mind. You're filling your capacity. Are they worth it? Is somebody else's life more valuable than yours? Wait a 
woman. When, when, when they ate of the tree. He said, you will know knowledge of good and evil and calamity. He said, you will eat of the fruit of any other tree. What was he saying? That right there is fruit. This other tree is thoughts. Okay, I just said something. I just said something. And I didn't hardly get nobody to say nothing. If you eat that tree, you're eating another opinion. And that's what's wrong with the body of Christ. We're eating another opinion. The Bible said we ought to walk by faith and not by sight. But you are eating another opinion. The word says, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And you're walking around scared because you are eating another opinion. Who is God talking to? Whatever it is that you've been asking God for and you have not received it, it is not God's fault. You have eaten another opinion. You have you have mixed the word with something that doesn't belong in there. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing nobody. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing. You got mixture going on in your spirit. That's why we done lost our identity. That's why we come to church now and think we're coming to a fashion show. Y'all ain't saying. You eating another opinion. We supposed to come in here and praise God until the portal opens up. You ain't got no praise God clothes on. Who am I talking? That ain't no praise God suit. That ain't no praise God dress. That ain't no praise God weave. Who am I talking to? We have lost our identity. The summer has ended and we are not yet saved. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? I don't care what you wear, but when you get in the house of God, you ought to tell the Lord, if you want to mop me up on the floor, if you want to roll me, whatever you're going to do, don't do it without me. Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to? Whatever you about to do. Don't do it without me. So, so here in the garden, in the garden was the birthing of lost identity. In the garden was the birthing of lost identity. You, you, you didn't hear that. In the garden was the birthing of not only lost identity, but when people are operating under the spirit of a lost identity, then everything that they touch, they pervert it. I can't get nobody to talk to me. Dr. Biden proved it. The Bible said when they ate of the tree, they realized they was naked. That wasn't the only thing. The Bible said that they took fig trees and they covered themselves like aprons. Figs were spoken into existence by God. 
They wasn't meant to be a skirt. Right away, fallen fingers have just transformed something that was supposed to be here for food and changed it to an apron. And you wondered how perversion got in people. You wondered how perversion got in the church because fallen fingers is preaching to you. Fallen fingers is prophesying to you. I'm not hearing y'all. Fallen fingers is evangelizing you. Fallen fingers is pastoring you. I'm not hearing you. Who is God talking to? I'm not going to back up in here until you shout. I'm going to keep on preaching until you shout. Somebody give him a shout in here. And the Bible said, wrong key, son. You got to go hide in that. Take your spirit, hide in that. I hear a key that sounds like a shofar. So go on up there and find it. Here it is. Here it is. Because this is the 21st century. Israel tonight is coming out of Egypt. This is the night we leave. And we collect the spoil. You don't hear what I'm saying. Everything that God promised you, you better get it in your spirit. Because when you walk out of here tonight, you're leaving Egypt. You're leaving the Egypt in your mind. You're leaving the Egypt in your mind. Let my people go! Let my people go!
our flesh when we receive the word and the instructions from the word in this building let me tell you something God showed me today when I was praying before I came here he said go look at Africa and I went he said go look at the continent and I went again I said, what do you want me to see? He said, South Africa is on the bottom of the tip. And he said, if I were to place the cross down the middle of South Africa, down the middle of the continent of Africa, South Africa is at the foot of the cross. And he said, South Africa have to be a, it have to be a country that stay on the altar. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. He said, South Africa got to stay at the foot of the cross. Who am I talking to? Is there anybody in here that received what God just said? You got to keep giving God a sacrifice. There must always be a sacrifice on the altar coming from this country. Sit in his presence. Sit in his presence. Sit in his presence. Everybody, sit in his presence. Come on, come on, come on. Don't stop your mouth from moving. I just said, sit in his presence. Say something to the Lord. Say something to the Lord. I know what I'm doing. Say something to the Lord. I know what I'm doing. You're consecrating a seat. I said, say something to the Lord. The presence of the Lord is going to be in your seat. Come on, come on. Come on. Don't stop your mouth from moving. Don't stop your mouth from moving. Come on, say something to God. Give him worship out of your spirit. Ask God to anoint you afresh. Tell God to send a fresh wind in your life. Tell God to send a fresh anointing in your life. God, I don't want to miss you in church. I don't want to be among the congregation of the dead. God, baptize me. Bring me back to life. Bring me back to life. Let me live again. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Tell him it's me, God. It's me, God. It's me, God.
I think I hear Africa. I think I hear Africa. I think I can hear Africa.